scripture this morning is from the Gospel of Luke. Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, Pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he rose from prayer and went back to the disciples, he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping? He asked them. Get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The word of God for the people of God. I want to give a shout out to our very own Grace Notes who are going on the road today, taking it to um, another church, and uh, that's very exciting. We are so fortunate to have them. Now, you probably saw the title for this message, Discipline or Regret, and you thought, well, I don't want to hear about either of those. I regret coming today. <laughs> discipline is painful. That's why we don't like it. But without discipline, we won't get very far in life. For example, do you want to graduate? Then you have to go through the pain of studying and taking tests. Do you want to be physically fit? Then you have to go through the discipline, the pain of exercise. Do you want to... Um, be financially secure, then you have to go through the pain of not having what you want right now if you can't afford it. Do you want to be a follower of Jesus? Then you have to go through the pain of denying yourself, disciplining yourself, and doing things that you would rather not do. The scripture passage for today is about Jesus praying in the garden before his arrest. Jesus and his disciples had gathered for the Passover meal in a borrowed room in Jerusalem. They sat on the floor around a low table. And Jesus passed bread and wine to his best friends. And although he had told these friends that he was going to be betrayed and that he was going to be put to death, I don't think they fully comprehended what was about to happen. But Jesus did. Here's a picture of the Garden of Gethsemane, the Mount of Olives today. The olive trees are very unusual, but the garden itself is well kept, well tended, and it's very peaceful. And it was a place that Jesus often went and met with his disciples. Jesus told his friends there in the garden to pray that they would not give in to temptation. He knew that they would very soon be tempted to run away, hide, and deny that they ever knew him. From the Garden of Gethsemane, looking out, you can see the walls of Jerusalem. Jesus would have seen this. There would have been a lot of people around because it was the Passover holiday. Maybe he looked out at the gathering darkness and thought about his options. He could walk away. He could walk away from this city and his enemies in it who were plotting his death. He could walk away from these friends of his who just a little while ago were sitting around the table talking about who was the greatest among them and now were sleeping on the ground. He could walk away from the plan to take the sins of the world on himself, even the sins of those who hated him. And Jesus separated himself from his disciples and prayed. And he said, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, 
yet not my will but yours be done. He prayed that God wouldn't require him to go through it. Maybe there was some other way that God's plan could be fulfilled. It's important to remember that while he was on earth, Jesus was fully divine, God, Jesus was God, and fully human. Jesus had emotions and skin and nerve endings just like you and me. He got dusty and dirty and hungry and tired just like you and me. He was God with skin on. In the Gospels of Matthew and Mark, when they write about the Garden of Gethsemane, they record Jesus saying to his closest disciples, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. He was in so much anguish, he, he looked like he was bleeding because he was sweating so much. An angel from heaven appeared and strengthened him, and finally, after more prayer, he got up and prepared to meet his betrayer and everything else that he would soon endure. Jesus chose the cross. It's just human nature to want to avoid pain. Whether it's physical or emotional pain, we try hard to avoid it. We forget about doctor's appointments when we don't want to have to face having surgery. We skip family celebrations because we don't want to face the person who's angry with us or who we are angry with. We don't want to have to talk to them, see them, because we want to avoid the pain of having a difficult conversation. We also don't like waiting for something we want. We max out our credit cards to get what we want now because we don't want the discomfort of doing without. We're not very good at dealing with pain, but sometimes trying to avoid pain leads to more pain down the road. We're not very good at delaying gratification, but when we're quick to satisfy our immediate desires, we often live to regret it. I'm guessing that we all have regrets that come from not disciplining ourselves. Discipline is painful. If it wasn't painful, it wouldn't be necessary. But regret is also painful. Here's a quote. We must all suffer from one of two pains, the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. The difference is discipline weighs ounces while regret weighs tons. Jim Ron. We have a choice, discipline or regret. Little pain now or big pain later. You have to decide if you're going to follow Jesus and do things God's way or if you want to follow the world and be influenced by the latest and greatest ideas or if you want to do it your way. If you choose to follow Jesus, you're choosing a cross. There's some bad theology out there that says if you're going through difficulties or you don't have what you want, you're doing this Christian thing wrong. You need to name what you want, claim it, and expect God to deliver it. But Jesus said, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. I'm not saying that God doesn't want you to have anything good in your life. I'm not saying that God wants you to suffer all the time. That's not true. I'm saying that if you want to follow Jesus, your will is going to have to take a back seat to God's will, and that isn't going to be easy. Now, I want you to be careful here. I don't want you to hear me saying that you should be a doormat for the world to wipe its feet on. You need to do what God wants, not what somebody else wants you to do or thinks you ought to do. That is not self-denial. That is codependency. Do not allow yourself to be used or abused in the name of self-denial or cross-carrying. When your will takes a back seat, make sure it's God in the driver's seat and not anybody else. It's great when my way and God's way are the same, but usually it's not that way. Usually my way is the easy way, 
and God's way is the hard way. God's way requires discipline that I would rather avoid. But I guarantee you God's way is better, even if it seems a lot harder. When we want to avoid pain or discomfort and fail to discipline ourselves, we're missing out on God's best for us. You've heard it said that no one on his or her deathbed ever says, I wish I'd spent more time at work, or I wish I hadn't wasted all the time I spent with my kids, or all that fast food I ate was worth the heart attack. <laughs> what are you going to regret in the future by failing to discipline yourself now? Jesus had a choice, and I wonder if people realize that. Jesus had a choice. He had plenty of chances to leave, to get away from those who wanted to kill him. He could have just stopped the whole teaching and healing bit, said, sorry, I'm just going to go back to carpentry. My bad. He could have moved away, but he didn't. He chose the cross. Back in Luke chapter 9, it says, As the time approached for him to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. He knew what was coming. In the garden, he prayed that God's will would be done. And knowing what God's will required of him, he was in anguish. Then there's this verse that really interests me. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. I don't know about you, but I want more information on that. Did anybody else see the angel? What did the angel look like? What did the angel say? Did you hear the angel? What did the angel do to strengthen Jesus? What the heck? <laughs> don't leave me hanging. Unfortunately, we don't know any more than that one sentence tells us. The angel strengthened Jesus. God wasn't going to remove the cup, but he was going to give strength to drink it. God's plans weren't going to change, but God provided strength to go through them. It would still be very painful and very awful, but there was a purpose in the pain. Still, Jesus had a choice. He knew that Judas was leading the soldiers to him and would betray him with a kiss. And yet Jesus did not run and hide. He chose to stay and face the cross. God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son so that whoever believes in him will not die, but will have everlasting life. That was the plan. And Jesus did not want to go through the pain of crucifixion, but... He did want to save us from sin and death. Jesus wanted all of humanity to know how much God loves us. So Jesus denied himself and took up his cross. We have never had the fate of all humanity on our shoulders like Jesus did. But we will have to make choices that affect ourselves and others. Daily, we will have the choice to give into temptation or not. We are free to choose, but we are not free from the consequences. What do you want your future to look like? One year from now, five, 10, 20 years from now, what will it look like? What will you regret? What will you be glad that you did or didn't do? What choices do you need to make now to live regret-free in the future? Will the choices you make bring you closer to Christ or lead you farther away? In the future, will you know that you've chosen God's way and not your own, even when it was hard? It's our daily choices that determine our future. Of course, God has been dealing with me about this because I guess I can't preach something if I haven't had to wrestle with it. 
And there are things that I know God wants me to do, but I haven't made time for. I'm learning that my boundaries in life are a little too flimsy, and I'm allowing other things to take up time that I should be using for something else. And they may be good things, but even good things have to be put aside for the best thing that God wants us to do. Maybe you can relate to that. Maybe there are things in your life that um, you are allowing to eat up your precious time on earth so that your goals get farther and farther away from completion. Maybe there are things that are taking up your time and moving you farther and farther away from Jesus. Even the good things in life can get in the way of things that God is calling us to do. What is God calling you to do and to be in this life you have been given? What are you putting off until later that you should be doing now? Discipline is painful, but in a good way. The pain has a purpose. The pain of lifting weights builds the muscles. The pain of denying myself builds my faith muscles. We believe that God has the best plan, even when it doesn't look very good. We discipline ourselves to take up our crosses every day, believing that we won't regret it. Discipline is painful. When you are tempted to quit or to take the easier way, what will you do? God won't take away all the temptations in life or every ordeal but he will give us strength to go through it. Do what Jesus did. Pray. Don't do what the disciples did. Sleep. Don't be spiritually asleep or just going through the motions. Be alert and aware of the spiritual battle that goes on around you all the time. Jesus told the disciples to pray so that they would not fall into temptation. We are going to be tempted but we don't have to give in to it. Pray and ask God to strengthen you. And it's okay to tell God what you want. Jesus did. Jesus told God that he'd rather not drink from the cup, but be willing to do what God wants you to do. You can tell God what you want, but be willing to do what God tells you to do. You can tell God you don't want to go through something. But if that's what God wants you to go through, then do it, knowing that God will strengthen you. God will be with you and will strengthen you if you choose to deny your own wants. Discipline is painful, but regret even more so. It's your choice. Let's pray. God, we thank you that you are always with us. That you want to strengthen us if we will just ask. God, help us to know that your will is the best way. Help us to choose your way over our way. Help us to discipline ourselves to deny ourselves and take up our own cross so that in the future we will not have regret and we will hear you say, well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. Amen.